So if someone gave you a billion dollars, but you didn't wake up tomorrow, you probably wouldn't take it. And that's because our health is more important than money, right? For that reason, we are at the gym and we're about to get after it, All right? So we got some pre-workout. I'm running, I think it's called Bum. It's Chris Bumstead's pre-workout. And then I mix it with usually 40 grams of carbs and then a half gram of salt. So I look veiny, so I look like a penis. And with that being said, we're gonna we're gonna get cracked and we're gonna get into this. You can't say that. Fuck yeah, I can. So today we got legs. Um, we're gonna hit them with the girl today. Already did a mile and a half, a two mile run. Today on the beach, we had family in town. So really the premise for me is I run and I lift weights. So I'm losing weight right now. I used to be around like 183. Right now I'm like 175. So losing weight, strength still good. So we're gonna finish up stretching and then we're gonna get into some leg extensions and start the day. So starting off with leg extensions, just focus on you know, the contraction, getting some blood in the legs, and just get warmer. It's pretty much the focus of the start. You got the towel right here, right? This is what happens, guys. When you date a germaphobe, and they just don't like greasy fucks at the gym, you put towels on all the equipment. neck pad out um, you, you guys should be using neck pads um, you know they really help you out as far as increasing your estrogen we're, ta we're taking this fucker off we're gonna start off with 135 just get loose start to move the weight around and then we're gonna increase from there uh, but no neck pad today she's good she's gonna probably use one she's got a sunburn but we're going no but no neck pad straight up naked barbell today So we're probably gonna do, start doing like three reps. We're gonna do sets of three here. When I break over 200, I'm gonna put the belt on, just help out with the lower back support. It's had an injury before, so I wanna make sure there's no issues. Yeah, feel strong as fuck. We'll go up to 225 and we'll see what happens after that. So last week I got the question on my thoughts on biohacking. And here's my take. It depends on your lifestyle in terms of you know what you do, what you have time for. Me personally, bro, I don't have time to fucking do all that. So what I do instead is I run peptides. I run uh, some Orlin. Helps with my growth hormone levels because I'm deficient there. It saves me time, bro. At the end of the day, like, I got bigger fish to fry, better routine to do every day. Just the boys. We're gonna do three by eight. This entire like program, my lifting regime, I don't come up with this. Um, I got a buddy, he's been in the bodybuilding industry for years. I take his program, learn from people that are better than you. That's what helps me out. Legs have always been my weak point. I've always had pencil legs. So we're here today, removing that, working on our weaknesses.
Now we're moving into heel elevated squats. Goal here is try and finish off the quads. Um, this is one thing that I've been told is good at that. It helps with knees too. When you run and you lift, you fuck up your knees. Allegedly this helps. We will see. I've been trying to work on as far as the mental frame go, come closer. As far as mental frame goes, is doing stuff that I would thank myself for tomorrow. So turn up the intensity in the gym, turn up the intensity with the business, personal development, all that shit. It sucks in the moment, but I know I'll thank myself for it tomorrow. And I feel like that's how you build true confidence, is making those promises, having massive action, and backing it up with commitment and discipline. So we're gonna finish up here and then we're gonna head over into hamstrings. So I got a question in the community. How did I get better at speaking? And I wanna tell you a secret. When I was in first grade, I was in a speech class because I had a stutter and I couldn't really speak well. What helped me out is I started watching people who were great at speaking, watching, you know, presidents, watching press conferences, people who could articulate their words really well. And I just kind of stole their game. Honestly, I, I learned from what they did, how they didn't stutter, the words they used, the tonality and the diction. So the best way I think that you could improve on your speaking ability is just by watching people who are much better at it and taking assets of their game and adding them to yours. Now we're gonna do some uh, Romanian deadlifts. So I'm gonna use kettlebells. I got the 20 kilos out. And we'll probably do like two, three sets of these. <laughs> Stop, bro. <laughs> okay. Can't use a barbell. All the barbells are taken. Otherwise, I'm fucking light headed after that, wow. Otherwise, I'd be using a barbell, so if we can swap in, someone taps us in, we get a barbell, we're gonna do it. Oh, oh. There it is. So now we have a barbell, which is sweet. We're gonna finish up here, and then, and then I actually don't know what we have. We gotta look at the, uh, the workout sheet. I like barbell more, do more weight, feels better. Get a better stretch, too. How do you correlate your gym mindset to your work mindset? Like business? Yeah. Here's what I'll say. When it comes to the gym, I'm incompetent. I'm not incompetent, but I don't know much. And I like to have the same mindset in business is no matter how much money you make, no matter how much you think you've done, you have to have a high teachability index. People are usually lazy, stupid, or arrogant. But most people are arrogant. So I just try and learn everything I can. As I said at the start, I literally get my program from a bodybuilder. Same thing in business. There's always something you can learn. There's always something you can get better at. Do you think when you perform well in the gym, it transfers to performing well in like business and sales? Without a doubt. I think um, in business, a lot of it's fortitude. It's just getting kicked in the teeth so many times and getting up regardless. And I think uh, the gym, it teaches you just that. You literally go in the gym, you beat the shit out of your body, and eventually you adapt, you roll with the punches. And it's not like it hurts less. It's not like the leg days hurt less. Well, you just get used to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it becomes who you are. It gives you a strong identity. So 100% they go hand in hand. I think the first thing you should do, if you're not making the money you want, is get into the gym. It's the first thing I did. First thing I did. <laughs> we got some hamstring curls. So we're down here. And uh, we're going to finish this up. And then we're gonna wrap up with some finishers. And we're gonna get out of here. The question I got in the community was, what's the best way to scale past $10,000 a month? Because there's all this hype about getting to 10K a month, which is cool, it's great. I think it's a good stepping stone. But someday you're gonna get there, and I think it's important to know how to scale past. I think the best thing for me was just learning the 80-20 rule. Like what 20% of my actions are getting 80% of the results and then tune that. There's two ways you can make more money in business. 
You can get better at the, the cash collecting process, right? The skill itself, or you can just do more of the thing, more of the actions. If you're fucking lazy, probably the best way to do it is just to get better at your cash collection process. Investing in a sales coach, preferably a program. I don't really like courses. I like coaching programs where maybe they have content and I can get on live calls. Like I said earlier, it's, it's buying the fast pass at Disney World. It, it expedites the whole journey. So we're finishing up with calves. As always, um, I was genetically cursed with fetal calves. So yeah, that's what we're working with. That's why we're here, right? We're in the lab. And uh, we're gonna finish up with this, do some sauna, and then we're gonna answer one more question. All right, and that concludes it right there. That's a leg day. But, but, gotta answer the question. So, final question. I've got my blood work done twice. And first time I got it done, like I said earlier, my GH was pretty low. And then my test was, I mean, my test was low, it was 650 nanograms per deciliter. And one thing I did to improve it that got me over the thousand mark was A, I, didn't, I don't wear underwear. Sounds weird. I don't wear underwear. I think underwear shrinks your pee pee. I think it, you know, it just compresses your stuff and it makes sense why it would restrict growth. It's gravity, bro. If it, it, anything that hangs is going to grow. That's my philosophy. And then secondly, like I said earlier, I took a peptide. So the reason why I like peptides is they're not a drug. So a drug essentially is where you're, you know, injecting or you're ingesting some form of the artificial hormone. So your body becomes reliant on an artificial supply and you shut down your natural production versus with peptides, it tells your body, hey, we need to produce more of this stuff. And then you can actually quit the peptide and it levels up in terms of your production. I'm not a doctor, not, you know, incredibly knowledgeable in the space. I pay doctors for consultations. That is my impression on it and uh, they work. They work extremely well. Helped me with my sleep, helped me with my recovery, made me you know, faster as far as running goes and uh, definitely caught off some fat. So as always, stay focused, stay committed. I'll see you next time.